But today, the Soviet Union concluded its retreat from Afghanistan. Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. The final hours could not have looked more different when U.S. troops left Vietnam in 1975 and scenes on the Afghan border today. But there are some striking similarities. What does defeat do to the soul of a superpower? That's our story tonight. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. Nine years ago, President Carter decided that U.S. athletes should not compete in the Summer Olympics because... They were going to be held in Moscow. The president was looking for ways to convey American outrage over the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. So there was the Olympic boycott and a grain embargo and over the years increasing support for the Afghan rebels, the Mujahideen. But if anyone seriously believed 10 or 8 or even 5 or 6 years ago that the Soviets might be forced out of Afghanistan again, theirs were lonely voices indeed. Since the early 1950s, the Soviets have never withdrawn from territory they have occupied. As Vietnam was for us, Afghanistan has been a sobering experience for the Soviet Union. What you are about to see are excerpts from a Soviet documentary called Waiting. It was aired in the Soviet Union last week. You will also hear a few opinions of the war in Afghanistan recorded earlier today in Moscow. I'll tell you something about this war. Of course, this war was horrible for mothers. The blows it struck. When I came back from Afghanistan, after all, there are all kinds of people, you know. They said all sorts of things about me. Some said I deserted. Others said that I'd wounded myself to come back alive. It's very painful to listen to all of that. After I came back from Afghanistan, at first, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep well. Because in Afghanistan, we mostly worked at night. As soon as I shut my eyes, I saw the faces of my friends, my comrades who had died. I understood that I had to do something, not to go crazy. So I found work in the night shift in a print shop. The print shop has all kinds of information. In particular, there's a lot of information from Afghanistan. And it's convenient for me to work there because during the afternoon, I can work on trying to find the families of those who have died. Only their relatives and friends know about them. Most of them died a heroic death. When we sent the lists in to the city executive committee and we said that some of the schools and streets here should be named after those soldiers the answers were well their names have been enshrined on monuments and that's enough and unfortunately they rejected our request but I think that's not the end of this nevertheless we're going to try and see to it that in fact our motto nobody is forgotten and nothing is forgotten is a true one he was such a wonderful soldier and here, here it is. Here's what they brought me. It's the death certificate. That's all. It's true, they value what he did. They value his work. He did his international duty. He did. He gave the most valuable thing he had, his life. Yura was a very honest 
boy. I said to him, you're a listen. I said, why don't you stay behind? He said, how can I stay behind? Here, all the kids are going to go off. I'm going to go with them. What happens if somebody dies in my place? I'll never be able to live after that. I've got to go. He wrote those letters. On the 24th of October, he wrote to us that everything is fine. Don't worry. I'll definitely come back. On the 31st, he was dead. Afghanistan is something I remember my whole life, whether I want to or not. It's something I remember every single day. Some of the soldiers who come back from Afghanistan have a difficult time going back to civilian life. They run into bureaucracy, they run into arrogance. They withdraw. They lose faith in social justice. But others say, never mind, we'll manage. And it is up to society to heal the scars of war, not only on their faces, but also in their souls. Because society and Perestroika need these kids because they will follow their chosen course and they will champion the cause of socialism in the Soviet Union. My opinion is that it was a big mistake. And now all our sacrifice and our, our people lost uh, was in vain. People of Afghanistan did not need uh, our revolution. We didn't have to export it. Our people who died are faceless, who suffered, who died in hospital from wounds, of those people who committed suicide after they returned back to the Soviet Union. It's not enough to put this memorial. I wish we had less memorials like this in Russia. When we return, we'll be joined by two journalists with first-hand experience in the Afghanistan and Vietnam defeats. Artyom Borovic of the Soviet Communist Party magazine Ogonyok and Neil Sheehan, author of the book A Bright Shining Lie. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Toyota. My palms used to sweat when I had to get on the highway. Now with my Camry V6, I just punch. Yeah, punch it, Margaret. My Toyota, I love it. The 1989 Toyota Camry V6. 24 valves, 153 horsepower to please even the toughest customers. We just fell in love with life in the fast lane. My Toyota, who could ask for anything more? When does one minute seem more like one zillion minutes? When it's the minute it takes to microwave Cheese Whiz Instant Hot Cheese Sauce. As you wait, your thoughts turn to the tingly tang of cheddary Cheese Whiz. Poured up and down nachos, back and forth over broccoli, melted over macaroni. Then just when you can't wait a second longer, the waiting is over. Cheese Whiz Processed Cheese Spread. The marvelous microwave in a minute cheese sauce. Plug into electrifying savings on great Hoover cleaners during Hoover Savings Time USA. Save on this lightweight Hoover Elite or this Spirit Portable Canister. Your choice for only $99 each. This Spirit Power Nozzle Canister is just $179. And this Hoover Quick Broom 2 is perfect for fast cleanups at only $45. The country is lighting up with great Hoover savings. Plug into power with Hoover and save during Hoover Savings Time USA. Going on now at Dillard's. When you're really hungry for seafood, most places make you wait, and wait, and wait. But if you want great seafood in a matter of minutes, there's only one great little seafood place, Captain D's. Where you can get Captain D's baked fish dinner, tender baked fish fillets lightly seasoned and served on a bed of rice. Captain D's, what a great little seafood place. Peter Jennings on ABC's World News Tonight. Hard news, covered by the strongest bench of any network. ABC News, America's choice. Joining us from our Moscow bureau is Artyom Borovic, foreign editor of the magazine Ogonyok. Mr. Borovic was assigned by his magazine to cover the Soviet withdrawal from Afghanistan 
and he returned from Afghanistan himself literally just hours ago. And in our Washington bureau is author and journalist Neil Sheehan. Mr. Sheehan covered U.S. military action in Vietnam for United Press International and the New York Times. And as the author of A Bright Shining Lie, John Paul Van and America in Vietnam. Artyom, first of all, the experience of many American soldiers who came back from Vietnam was great difficulty in dealing with the notion that a great power like the United States had lost the war. Those are words that people to this very day still have a hard time saying and believing. Is the same thing true of Soviet troops leaving Afghanistan? Well, there is a very strong feeling of sadness among the troops. Uh, I did not find a, a lot of, you know, excitement. It was logical to find it because the troops were at last l leaving this uh, territory, I mean, Afghanistan, and ending the war. But there was more sadness than uh, excitement. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think that this is this uh, that the those people who started this war lost it and that uh, Gorbachev and people who came with them uh, this is a great achievement of Pit this is one of the greatest achievements of Perestroika the withdrawal so this is how we try to see it not as a uh, defeat uh, but as a achievement of perestroika, I mean, this, uh, the withdrawal of Soviet troops. Neil Sheehan, um, you must hear a great deal of resonance, particularly as we listen to the voices of some of those parents and some of the, the young veterans in, in Moscow today. Sounds so much like what we've been hearing in this country over the past 15, 20 years. It sounds strikingly like it. Uh, it's, 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 it's very sad to watch those pictures to see those mothers crying and to see those young men rejected because it's very similar to the experience of first of all the mothers who lost their sons in Vietnam the, uh, the, the terrible tragedy not only of losing a child but losing a child in a war that has no meaning uh, that having us having a child killed in a war where the child is killed for nothing and then the the sad rejection of the veteran who's blamed for the war him in a way blamed for the war by the society very unjustly because of course he's not to blame he's a victim too you heard what, what Artyom had to say, and, and uh, you know, clearly there is something to that. I mean, Gorbachev made it possible for the Soviet troops to pull out, and he, after all, is not the one who put them in. Uh, but in point of fact, the, the, uh, you know, the Nixon Ford administrations uh, didn't get a whole lot of credit for pulling American troops out of Vietnam, even though they weren't the ones to, to put them in in the first place. Differences, similarities, what, what do you hear? Well, there are big differences, I think, uh, in the way the two countries uh, left their wars. We tried to stay on in Vietnam. Nixon's policy of Vietnamization was a way of continuing the war by gradually shifting the burden to the South Vietnamese, the burden of the combat, that is, in slowly withdrawing American troops to buy political credit at home. And in that period of time, 21,000 Americans died under President Nixon, uh, about a third of our casualties, a third of our killed. So the, the, the United States never gave up and withdrew in a, in a sh relatively short period now, a period of a year, as the Soviet Union did. We, didn't, and we, we really tried to keep the thing going. And that, probably, that undoubtedly added greatly to the trauma. Artyom, talk to me for a moment about what, what Soviet goals, Soviet intentions were when troops first went in nine and a half years ago. Uh, and, and how now it can be rationalized that really none of those goals has been met. I think there's no way to rationalize uh, of, of those uh, goals that uh, the uh, Brezhnev government wanted to achieve. I think they wanted to have a, uh, well, more or less pro-Soviet government in the face of PDPA, of Babrak Karmal, and later on of uh, Najibullah. Uh, but uh, they wanted to have a, a friendly country and uh, probably controlled by them. This was. The, uh, they wanted to have a force there uh, in the government that would be absolutely friendly to Soviet Union. Um, I think this this was one of the uh, this was one of the aims. It is really hard to say what those men wanted. This is absolutely unlogical what they've made and what they've done. This is a terrible mistake in our history. Now you you have literally just come back from there, as I mentioned in introducing you. Uh, journalists have the luxury of being able to predict without having to live with the consequences of their predictions so 
predict for me what's going to happen how long can the can the forces of, of Najibullah hold on in in places like Kabul God it's so hard to say um, some people say here that if they manage to uh, stay uh, to be just to survive during two or three months it means they'll survive forever but mm, you see I I've seen so many episodes that contradict to this point of view. Uh, for example, I must tell you that the last Soviet soldier who was killed in Afghanistan, his name is Lichovich, he was killed four days ago, and I uh, right in Salang, in the mountains of Salang, and of this tunnel. Uh, he was killed by one of the uh, soldiers of the Afghan regular army. Just, it was as an excuse for this Afghan soldier uh, when the uh, Mujahideen come to tell them, look, I was fighting Soviets also, just like you did. This is a tragical s a symbol uh, of this war and end of this war. Let's take a break. When we return, we'll be joined by Oleg Derkovsky, a diplomat at the Soviet Embassy here in Washington. You're ready to sell your house. Call Coldwell Banker. We don't just tell you we'll do everything we can to find you a buyer. We guarantee we'll use 18 proven marketing techniques to sell your home. We guarantee it in writing. And we wouldn't give you that guarantee if we weren't confident of one thing. Coldwell Banker. Expect the best. We guarantee it. A member of the Sears Financial Network. With it, you can communicate instantly with anyone virtually anywhere in the world. With it, you can save time and money. Without it, you're just not dressed for business. The MCI card. It is America's business card. I don't ask why, and I don't ask how, because I already know where. Right here. Ace Tall Kitchen Drawstring Trash Bags are just $177, and six pairs of Loving Hands Latex Gloves are $288. Hey, Ace is a place for me. You don't have to wait for your tax refund. Now you can get your money fast. You can? How do you do that? Just go to H&R Block. That's it? That's right, and ask for the Rapid Refund Program. Then what happens? For a small fee, H&R Block electronically files your federal return directly with the IRS, so your refund loan is on its way to you within a matter of days, whether Block prepares your income tax return or not. Yeah, that's fast. That's the new Rapid Refund Program from H&R Block. It's fast. Hurry, hurry, the Shoney's Captain D Super Show, the Ice Circus with the Care Bears and my pet monster is coming to town. See the greatest array of Olympic and world ice skating champions ever to appear in Nashville. See the Vision Journey freestyle bike and skateboard team, the thrilling space wheel, Argentinian gauchos, bears in the air, the globe of death, daredevils 80 feet overhead, February 24th through 26th, Municipal Auditorium. Opening night February 24th is WKRN Family Night with all tickets a special 675. Me and My Girl, Broadway's biggest musical comedy hit, promises you'll have love, laughter, and be happy ever after. Now's the time to get your tickets to Broadway's happiest hit, the award-winning musical, Me and My Girl. Take your Valentine to the Tennessee Performing Arts Center on February 14th through the 19th to see Me and My Girl, part of the first American TPAC Broadway series. It happened with autos and VCRs. It could happen again with the biggest advance in TV since color. High definition. Watch 2020 Friday. Will Japan beat us to the 21st century tomorrow? Japan's technological success. And they're popping up everywhere. A look at Faxmania tomorrow on Good Morning America. Joining us now from our Washington bureau is Oleg Derkovsky, counselor at the Soviet Embassy in Washington and an expert in Near and Middle Eastern affairs. You know, it's curious because uh, the way that we got involved in Vietnam and the way that you got involved in Afghanistan is quite similar. We were both concerned uh, that the People's Republic of China was going to be exerting undue influence. We were worried about them in Vietnam. You were worried about them and us in Afghanistan. Similarities in the way we got involved. You also see similarities in the way that we're pulling out of our involvements? Uh, I believe there are a number of similarities and wouldn't deny that, but they seem to me to be of a superficial nature. I see more differences in this situation. 
But this is a side issue for the moment as far as I'm concerned. I believe uh, there is an established fact and there is no two way about it. Afghanistan is a bleeding wound for the Soviet Union. The way Vietnam was and remains to be a bleeding wound for the United States of America. But having said that, uh, I believe we shouldn't overlook the fact that today we are witnessing a qualitatively new atmosphere around the Afghani problem, which makes it easier to reach a comprehensive political solution which will suit everybody, all Afghani sides and regional uh, powers, and which will bring a better atmosphere for moving towards political solution of other regional conf conflicts. Let me just ask you, do, you, do you think it's possible that a political solution can be reached in Afghanistan? Because I have a very strong feeling that it's going to be a military solution that's reached first. It is not only possible from my point of view, it is what we actually would like to attain, uh, to, to ensure uh, by all our means at our disposal, uh, mostly political and diplomatic uh, means. Uh, we believe that it is feasible, it is plausible, it is possible. RTM, uh, I'd be interested in hearing from you since you're our freshest returnee from Afghanistan. Can a political solution be achieved, do you think, to the degree that the Mujah Mujahideen will not attack Kabul and some of the other major cities around there? In other words, can there be a political rather than a military solution? Well, they are attacking already yesterday. Uh, the Soviet ambassador and the uh, general of the army, Varenikov, were leaving Kabul under very strong fire of the uh, Mujahideen. So uh, I'm afraid there's going to be a bloodbath in Afghanistan. A bloodbath. Now, you know, yeah. there too, that's ironically, that's the same word that Americans were using before we pulled out of Vietnam, that there would be a bloodbath there. And, and uh, let me just ask Neil Sheehan, to what degree do you think that, that, that those warnings uh, actually foreshadowed what, what came to pass. I realize life has been anything but a bed of roses in Vietnam, but was the bloodbath ever realized? Not the bloodbath we imagined. No, we thought the Vietnamese communists would kill 25,000 or 50,000 people on the other side. And of course, they threw people in jail and kept the senior people in these, they were, they were prisons, re-education camps, and just released some of them last year. But the kind of bloodbath that perhaps is being talked about in Afghanistan didn't occur in Vietnam but you must remember of course that an organized army that is an, an army a conventional army took over South Vietnam the Mujahideen seem to be obviously different groups and you don't have one leader and you don't have a conventional army so I should think it's it's a much potentially much more explosive situation RTM maybe you would now explain what what is it you mean when you talk about the bloodbath I mean why because there is so much division within the Mujahideen uh, both. I think uh, the Mujahideen uh, groups will be fighting between one each other and uh, some of the groups will be fighting against the Najibullah government. At the same time, I must tell you that it's very hard to predict. For example, the Soviet military command in Afghanistan was predicting that we, uh, that we would be leaving Afghanistan under strong fire, being attacked from all the sides uh, by the Mujahideen. There wasn't made a single shot at the Soviet army leaving uh, Afghanistan. As I told you, Lichovich was killed by an Afghan soldier of Mr. the regular Afghan army. Mr. Derkovsky, what is it that makes you that makes you believe that under these circumstances, though, a, a political settlement can be reached? I don't feel comfortable with the predictions about the bloodbath. I'm simply amazed uh, at the way some people are talking about the developments which might take in Afghanistan as if it were a gladiator's arena in ancient Rome. What is clear for me at this moment that is that the world at large has possibilities and opportunities to prevent the bloodbath. And the best way to achieve, to attain that is a ceasefire, a total ceasefire and cessation of supply weapons to all uh, warring factions and groups in Afghanistan by all countries, including the United States and the Soviet Union. I think it, it, it is a very reasonable approach. It, it, it has to be, uh, uh, certain efforts in this direction has to be uh, exerted. It would be from the point of view of, uh, the, of the probable results, it would, be, it would be fair on the moral grounds and political grounds because 
I simply do not envisage that somebody could lose as a result this development of, of events. We have to take a break. We'll continue our discussion in just a moment. If you're moving out of town, there is a way to see available homes before you begin traveling. It's the exclusive ERA moving machine, and it lets you see homes for sale anywhere in the country by tapping into ERA's nationwide network of over 2,200 offices. So, whether you're buying or selling a home, look to the right real estate company. Your local, independent ERA broker. Let me guess, you like Eagle Premier's European styling. Right. High-tech engine. Right. Transmission, suspension. Right. And you'll even sacrifice room to get it. Wrong. Design News says Eagle Premier breathes class. Its aerodynamic design combines European, European style, style with high-tech high resulting in a great-looking car. You've read it? I wrote it. Every time I call quality, comfort, or clarin, I said, give me one of them rooms with no smoking. They said, you smoking Joe Fraser. I said, yeah, but I don't smoke. They said, you smoking Joe Fraser. Finally, I convinced them with my personality. Call 800-221-2222 to reserve your no smoking room at Comfort. Also available at Quality Clarion. Medication. Linda, who are you kidding? Daddy, I, I can't wake her. We can't keep on like this. We just can't. If a woman in your life is being destroyed by alcohol and drugs, you don't have to go it alone. Call the Koala Women's Program. A Koala professional is ready with understanding and hope in total confidence. You don't have to go it alone. Koala can help. Continuing now, first with Artyom Borovic in, in Moscow. Artyom, I, I think you know what I mean when I ask this question. What, do you, what does it do to the soul of a great power when it has to withdraw from a long, bloody conflict like this under, the, under these kinds of circumstances? Um, you see, for Russia, traditionally, a war abroad meant br uh, it brought to some very uh, uh, hard social discomfort, unrest or some very uh, fast evolution to new ideas. For example, uh, in, uh, I mean, the war abroad. In 1812, the war against Napoleon, when Soviet officers returned from France, the Decembrist movement began. Uh, after the Second World War, when the Soviet, uh, Soviet forces returned from Germany, uh, I think the, the straight result of it was uh, uh, the democratization that followed after the 20th Party Congress uh, by Nikita Khrushchev. Uh, what, what will happen today, it is hard to predict. This generation, I, I wouldn't call it a lost generation, but it is trying to find itself in the, uh, right now, in the battle in this country, for Perestroika. I don't know where will these people go, but this is, they might be a great support for Perestroika or might not. It is very hard to say. Yeah, I was going to I ask you, are, are, are these people in their families likely to be supporters of Mr. Gorbachev and his policies, or is there bitterness there? I think uh, supporters of Gorbachev, because they understand that if it was Brezhnev's government, we would have stayed in Afghanistan for another 20 years. All right, so, gentlemen, I... Thanks I, for him. Thank you, RTM. I, I, I know this was particularly difficult for you, and you haven't had much sleep, but I'm very appreciative of your coming. Neil Sheehan, thank you very much. And Mr. Derkovsky, it was kind of you to join us. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. If you wish a printed transcript of this or any Nightline broadcast, please send $3 to 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 1007 or call 212-227-READ. This has been a presentation of ABC News, where more Americans get their news than from any other source.